In FeatureCam 2016, you now have the ability to control the upper and lower Z limits of a 5-axis simultaneous swarfing toolpath. This enhancement means you can now confine a swarfing toolpath using a Z start or a Z end attribute. This is useful if there are, for example, tool length limitations, or if you wish to vary the step down for different segments of a swarfing toolpath. Now in this particular example, if we look at the component on screen, we have various slots around the top region of the component that we wish to machine. Looking at the walls of the slots, we can see the, these have a taper, and therefore what we're going to do is some initial roughing to remove the majority of material from the center of the slot, and then we're going to establish the taper on the walls of the slot using a swarfing toolpath. I'm just going to hide the stock and have a look within the part view. What we can see is we have a few pre-created features. The first of the features is a vortex roughing toolpath. We can see this through the strategy selection like so. So I'm going to play through this toolpath within a 3D simulation. And what we can see, the tool just working its way to remove the majority of material in that center region. So there we have the roughed out slot like so. At this particular stage I'm also going to use the results as a starting point for my next features. So I'm going to select that option, exit out of the simulation and switch off my roughing toolpath. I'm going to switch on the next of the features and just have a look at that feature. What we can see, this is a swarfing toolpath. If we have a look within the milling attributes, what we've specified is to use the multi-cut strategy. So we're taking multiple cuts in Z Additionally, we're using a Z increment, in this case of 5 millimeters, and we've also chosen a radial offset so that we're leaving 0.25 millimeters on the wall of the toolpath to be finished later. So we're going to play through a centerline simulation of that particular operation just so that we can focus on the toolpath. I'm also going to switch off my centerline rapids. So we can play through the toolpath. We see our constant 5mm step down working its way down the walls like so. Now if we play this within a 3D simulation. Just using my Alt F3 key to have the tool step into the operation. I'm also going to change the simulation tool color just to highlight the different operations. What we can see due to the taper on the wall of the slots, the first of the cuts is going to be taking substantial material, gradually working its way down the wall, removing less and less material. So if we play through our multi-cut swarfing operation, we can see the finished result like so. But as we mentioned, we have a constant step down, but due to the taper, we are cutting more material towards the top of the slots and less material towards the bottom. So in this scenario, a varied step down would be ideal. Let's just exit out of the simulation and switch off that swarfing toolpath. I'm going to go ahead and switch on my next swarfing toolpath. If we have a look within the milling attributes, the only thing that we've changed is in this case we've specified a Z start value and also a Z end value in order to confine our toolpath. Clicking on these attributes we can see our Z zero position starts at the top of the slot and this can be selected interactively like so. And additionally we have a Z end position which is roughly about halfway down the slot. Oh, let's just reselect that. That's in this case minus 16 millimeters. For the top region of this swarfing toolpath, we've specified a smaller step down to account for the larger amount of material that we're removing. So if I go ahead and play through a centerline simulation for that toolpath, 
what we can see is we step down to our minus 16z value using a much smaller step down uh, in z so that as we're taking cuts into larger amounts of material we're lowering the cutting forces if I switch on the next of the toolpaths what we can see is we essentially start where we finished off from the previous operation at our minus 16 millimeter value and then we go down to the bottom face at minus 30. In this case we've increased our step down to 6 millimeters as we're removing less material in the bottom half of the wall. Playing through both of these operations we can see we essentially have one continual swarfing toolpath with a varied step down like so.